dear friends, you're welcome to this morning's reflection on the readings of today. It is Pentecost Sunday, a great day indeed. The first reading. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. When Pentecost Day came round, the apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now, there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were Amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them <laughs> preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. This is the word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your riches. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Chapter 5, verse 16 to 25. The fruit of the spirit. If you are guided by the spirit, you will be in no danger of yielding to self-indulgence, since self-indulgence is the opposite of the spirit, the spirit is totally against such a thing, and it is precisely because the two are so opposed that you do not always cut out your good intentions. If you are led by the spirit, no law can touch you. When self-indulgence is at work, 
The results are obvious. Fornication, gross indecence, and sexual irresponsibility, idolatry and sorcery, feuds and wrongling, jealousy, bad temper and quarrels, disagreements, factions, envy, drunkenness, urges, and similar things. I warn you now, as I warned you before, those who behave like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. What the Spirit brings is very different. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There can be no law against things like that, of course. You cannot belong to Christ Jesus unless you crucify all self-indulgence, passions, and desire. Since the Spirit is our life, let us be directed by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Alleluia. And kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who issues from the Father, he will be my witness. And you too will be my witnesses, because you have been with me from the outset. I still have many things to say to you, but it would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learned, and will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. The Gospel of the Lord. To you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, happy feast day, the feast of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. I invite you to reflect on this reading on these readings by rearranging them according to the order of succession of events. The gospel speaks about a time before the coming of the Holy Spirit. The first reading speaks about the event of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the responsorial psalm talks about the continuous work of creation of the Spirit. And so I would like to take it in that order. <clears throat> Jesus in the gospel is predicting and promising, preparing his disciples for the coming of the Spirit. He says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will enlighten you, will teach you everything, because what I have to teach you now is too much for you now. But he will reveal to you the full truth, and he will make you to be my witnesses to the whole world. The Spirit will be the manifestation of the work of the Trinity. He is the Spirit of the Father. He is the Spirit of the Son. 
at that time when Jesus told the disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit, they had no idea. They had no experience of the Spirit. No wonder one time uh, one of them said, show us the, 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 the Father and we shall be satisfied. They don't know the Father, they don't know the Spirit, they know Christ. On Pentecost Day, as you have heard in the, in the first reading, <clears throat> then they had the first experience of the Spirit. A mighty wind coming from above, from heaven, and filling the house where they were. And then they saw the tongues of fire that divide and come on the head of each. We don't know how what they experienced inside them, but they were so fully urged, moved with vigor to go out and proclaim, and in such a way that people understood them. It was quite an event. Now, that manifestation of the Holy Spirit, which was spectacular on the day of Pentecost, is just one little event in the works of the Spirit that are continuous. The responsorial psalm, which is Psalm 103, in some, uh, some, ghost, some Bibles is Psalm 104, <clears throat> speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit in all creation. When you read that long psalm, it narrates, it would be beautiful to read, the work of the Spirit in all of creation. And in this response to psalm, we only have one verse of that long psalm, which says, How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your riches. The air we breathe, the beautiful sky, we are looking at the beautiful sky, the sunshine, the plants, all are through the work of the Holy Spirit. The food we eat, the functions of our bodies, the Spirit sustains the whole of God's creation. In God we live and move and have our being through the power of His Holy Spirit. The Spirit is at work in the church all the time. We receive the Spirit at baptism. We receive the Holy Spirit at confirmation. Every time we go to the Eucharist, we hear the priest says, Let your Spirit come upon these gifts that they may become the body and blood of Christ. So it is the Spirit that transforms into the body and blood of Christ. We receive the Spirit at the, at the Eucharist. When we go to confession, we are forgiven through the power of the Holy Spirit. He said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive will be forgiven. It is the power of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. And so uh, we might not just think of the spectacular way in which the Spirit comes, but he is at work all the time. <clears throat> But whereas the Holy Spirit is at work in creation and in, even in our physical bodies, Paul in the second reading has told us that we have the freedom to choose that the Spirit works in us and to refuse. And each choice has its consequences. He says if you are driving spirit is self-indulgence, the results are obvious and enumerates them to our, for us. He says fornication, gross indecency and sexual irresponsibility, idolatry and sorcery, feuds and wrangling, jealousy, bad temper and quarrels, disagreements, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and similar things. I'm sure these things are familiar around us, and sometimes even within us. But he says, if the Spirit of God is the one driving you, then also the results are clear. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
So the spirit is a matter of choice within our lives. And that's why he concludes by saying, since the spirit is our life, let us be directed by the spirit. It's our choice. And when we choose the spirit, then we learn a new language. We learn a new language. These people, when the disciples got out, they could understand them each in their own language. Now, there is a language that does not consist of words. The language of the Spirit is a language that is understood by everyone, regardless of which tribe, which color, which race they are. And this is what he has talked about as the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is the language of the Holy Spirit. Who on earth doesn't understand love? Who doesn't understand gentleness? Who does, who does, which culture doesn't understand self-control? This is the language of the Spirit, which makes us universally uh, acceptable to each other. So we pray for the gift of the Spirit. We pray for the recognition of the work of the Holy Spirit around us. And we pray for the ability to dispose ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit, which transforms us into the image and likeness of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.